Under the sea, around the coast of the United Kingdom, there is a vast and endless amount of nooks and crannies, which many different sea creatures hide in. They can also hide in plain sight, such as the flounder, which uses camouflage to blend into the sandy bottom. Many creatures, like barnacles or mussels, live on the edge of rock pools. to pods of dolphins which roam in the open water. But in this video, we are going to talk about one part of this great ecosystem. This being the greater and lesser spotted dogfish and the food chain which supports them. We are going to start this video off by talking about detritus. Detritus is organic matter, which is composed of animal wastes and bits of decaying creatures. It represents an enormous supply of energy for marine animals. With the major sources of detritus being decaying plants and algae, as well as dead animals. As the detritus falls through the different levels in the oceans, it is consumed by animals such as worms or clams. Detritus serves as an important food source for open water bacteria and some zooplankton. This, in turn, can channel the energy to larger animals when they are consumed. Although, the formation of detritus represents an initial loss of energy to organisms in the water column, the creatures feeding on the detritus return the energy to food chains. Next in the food chain is the edible mussel which eats detritus. The edible mussel, also known by the scientific name Mytilus edulis, is a bottom dwelling species that attaches itself to rocks or other hard surfaces using mucus threads that it secretes. They are very common all around the coast of the British Isles on sheltered rocky shores. They are filter feeding organisms that live off suspended organic matter, such as plankton and detritus. They do this by opening their shell ever so slightly, allowing water to enter them.
current of water is then drawn through using one of the two siphons, across the gills and out through the other siphon. The gills hang down like curtains and trap small particles of detritus or plankton, which are then carried to the stomach and digested, as well as extracting oxygen from the seawater. When the tide goes out, the mussel closes its shell and traps some water in it. This is so the mussel does not dry out when it is exposed to the air. When the tide returns, the shell opens back up and the mussel starts to feed again. The next part of the food chain is the shore crab, which eats mussels. The common shore crab, also known by the scientific name Carcinus minus. They are found from the eastern parts of the northern Atlantic to Norway, Africa and the Mediterranean. They were also accidentally introduced to the USA and Australia. You'll find the shore crab around rock pools as they are shallow water species. However, they are often found in the mouths of rivers and salt marshes due to their high tolerance of different salinities. The shore crab is a secondary consumer. This means it feeds on mollusks, worms, small gastropods, small crabs, algae, carrion, and almost anything else it can catch. With strong and powerful claws that help to crack open mussels, as well as fighting for food, territory, and partners. It also scavenges on any dead matter on the shore. With a seasonal movement, in summer it is common on the shore though in moving down into deeper water to survive the cold winters. The next part of the food chain is the greater and lesser spotted dogfish, which eat creatures such as the shore crab. The greater and lesser spotted dogfish are found mainly on sandy or rocky bottoms all the way down to the west coast of Africa. The name does not give the true identity of the greater or lesser spotted dogfish away, as it is in fact a shark and not a fish as the name suggests. The greater spotted dogfish and the lesser spotted dogfish look very similar to one another, but they are distinguishable from each other by the size and their appearance. The main difference in size is apparent from their names, the greater being the larger of the two as it can reach a length of up to 150 centimeters, while the lesser spotted dogfish can reach a length of up to 100 centimeters. The main differences in appearance are that the greater spotted dogfish has larger spots, while the lesser spotted dogfish has smaller spots on its body. The first thing to notice on the greater spotted dogfish is its fins. In order from the front, we have the pectoral fin, pelvic fin, anal fin, caudal fin, anterior dorsal fin, and then finally, the posterior dorsal fin. Next thing to pay attention to on the outside is the teeth. These are specialized for the greater spotted dogfish as they are small and pointy. This helps it to break into shells of crabs and other shelled creatures to obtain their food. Next item to pay attention to is the lateral line, which isn't clearly visible here. The lateral line is a sense organ in most fish which help in the detection of movement in the water. The skins of most sharks are covered in small, rough, placoid cells, which are called denticles, and these can be helped to identify the shark.
Once we cut open the greater spotted dogfish, you can see the total layout of all the organs inside. This is a typical arrangement of internal organs present in all sharks. The main point of interest when we open up the greater spotted dogfish is the liver. The liver itself contains a large amount of oil. The shark uses its liver to maintain its buoyancy in the water. The oil present in the liver is lighter than the surrounding water, which allows the shark to be more positively buoyant. This then prevents them from sinking when they become stationary. The liver has three lobes, two being very large and the third being small, which almost completely enclose the digestive system of the shark. Next point to notice is the gills. These are like the lungs. They provide an area which allows oxygen to be absorbed into the bloodstream from the water surrounding them. Unlike most sharks, the greater spotted dogfish can lie on the sea floor and rest as it has the ability to pump water through its mouth and over its gills to keep oxygen in its bloodstream. The next item that is a main factor in the greater spotted dogfish is the skeleton. Sharks have a skeleton made out of cartilage, which is similar to your ear or nose. Cartilage is a very flexible tissue. Which means that sharks are very flexible and can even touch their tail with their nose. Reproduction in the greater and lesser spotted dogfish happens when a male wraps itself around the female and then fertilizes the female's eggs with his sperm. The female will then suspend the egg behind her on a string-like cord and then wrap the egg around a piece of seaweed or a piece of anchor line. It takes around 8-10 to 10 months for the eggs to hatch. When hatched, they are usually about 16 centimeters long. The greater spotted dogfish is a scavenger of the seas. Its success relies on the abundance and variety of species that live in the ocean. Due to the adaptions of the greater spotted dogfish, it has become one of the most common predators, as it has the ability to eat a diverse diet.